really good. Tastes the, like a burger. Yeah, the texture is <laughs> there. It's juicy. There's two halves here, Eric, but I don't know if you're gonna get the other one. <laughs> the moment of truth. Let's do this. Tastes like a chicken nugget. When you're in the room, you're starting to smell the meat. Oh yeah, 100%, it smells like grilled chicken. Yes. Yeah. It has like the flavor and the juiciness inside. Pretty that's delicious. Yeah, well done. Yeah, you had to work hard to cut it. It just doesn't go through much. Yeah. It's not like you're cutting tofu. If you eat chicken, you know it like, peels apart, like there's texture to it, and this is doing that, and it's kind of blowing my mind. I will eat this whole thing if you need me to. <laughs> okay? I mean, it tastes good. Yeah, it's, it's really well prepared. good. If you didn't know, you wouldn't really question it. For the first time, U.S. regulators approved the sale of chicken made from animal cells. Course, Americans ate 75 billion pounds of red meat and chicken last year, but what if some of that meat was not raised on farms? What if I told you that you could eat chicken and beef that tastes exactly the same as normal chicken and beef, raise it in half the time without polluting the world, and most importantly, never kill another animal ever again? Good Meat says it offers meat without butchery. That's because the meat they provide doesn't come from living animals. Cells from chickens or eggs are extracted without killing the animal. Well, the year is 2023 and lab-grown meat just got its approval in the US. And it is deceptively tasty. My mind is blown right now. Like the texture is perfect. The juiciness is there. Like it is tender and the flavor profile is, it's chicken. Scientists say that lab-grown meat is going to be safer and better for you than conventionally grown meat. And that's not it. It's also saving the environment. Unfortunately for the climate, the product of enteric fermentation in the cow stomach is belching of methane. Unlike CO2, methane doesn't stay in the atmosphere for centuries, but it has a 28 times greater effect on warming than carbon dioxide. They don't know how dangerous they are. A cow annually belches into the atmosphere the CO2 equivalent of about 20,000 kilometers of driving. It's better for the world. But wait, there's more. It'll save animals from cruelty, harmful conditions, and a trip to the slaughterhouse. And yes, of course, it's just as healthy as normal meat. But lab-grown meat is created from a mixture of cells, organisms, and additives that might make you think twice about eating your favorite sirloin steak or grilled chicken sandwich ever again. I'm not here to convince you otherwise. I just assemble the facts for you to make your own decisions. There's a key ideology to this whole food business that keeps you in a loop year after year that some people fall for and pay for it dearly with their health and others with their lives. The most common justification for lab meat is that we need it to prevent conventional meat from destroying the planet. And what is the problem that we try to solve by cultivated meat? So that we, we have a planet to inhabit. President Biden signed an executive order this year requiring federal agencies to support cultivating alternative food sources. I'll tell you what lab-grown meat is actually made of, how they process it to the end, how this affects you and your family, and what I think is the best solution moving forward in this scientific age. But first, if you like these kinds of deep dive videos and want to see more of them, take a second right now to like this video, subscribe if you want to, and then let's dig into the facts. The bottom line is king, right? Big food giants and conglomerates are always looking for ways to lower their costs and raise their profits. After all, that's the perfect business model, right? Why wait months for a chicken to grow and mature? Never mind the two years and costs associated with cattle raising before they can be slaughtered. Let's find a way to slash that process down to a fraction of the time. And hey, there's another bright side. No more animal rights protesters breathing down your neck. No wonder there's all this talk about exploring alternatives, lab-grown meat, and saving animals on the planet. Everybody wins, right? I mean, what could possibly be the downside to that? If we've learned anything from history, it's that cheaper and faster isn't always the best alternative. But it's where health, safety, and the well-being of consumers tend to fall through the cracks, leaving us sicker and more jacked up than when we started. But the sad part is we don't even notice it until decades later and it's too late. What's important to note here is that food companies aren't just experimenting with this new science on their own. They are being funded. Yeah, this is big business. Don't believe me? 
Upside has raised more than $200 million from the likes of Bill Gates, Richard Branson, and food giants like Tyson and Cargill. They're all betting that the company will crack the code on making lots of meat without needing to do any slaughtering. That sound you hear is pigs and chickens and cows rejoicing. This means that they will do anything to sell you a dream, for pennies on the dollar to produce and make a fortune while you gobble it down and lick your fingers. We never thought we'd see the day that our food would be grown in a laboratory, but here we are. In fact, the idea isn't really that far-fetched. Back in 1931, British Prime Minister Sir Winston Churchill wrote in an essay entitled 50 Years Hence, we shall escape the absurdity of growing a whole chicken to eat the breast or wing by growing these parts separately under a suitable medium. It took a bit longer than 50 years, but today it's happening. And this begs the question, how do we make artificial meat? Next, you'll need some DNA because what's beef, pork or chicken without animal cells from cows, pigs and chickens? No, wait, that's not going to work. Regular animal cells only replicate a few dozen times and they grow very slowly. But if you're supposed to be eating actual animal meat, what kinds of cells do you use? Lab-grown or cultured meats use practices from regenerative science to grow meat without needing to grow an animal. It all starts with stem cells. Stem cells are a special type of cell that have the potential to become almost any type of cell found in the body. Skin cell, muscle cell, liver cell, etc. To harvest stem cells, technicians have to go to the primary source of the desired meat, directly to the cow. Here they take a sample of tissue directly from the animal, without killing it or even harming it. From this tissue, they then isolate multipotent stem cells, such as muscle stem cells. These are put into a bioreactor with a mixture of nutrients, amino acids, growth hormones. These ingredients promote the cells to start replicating and keep the cells alive and happy. Then, by adding different growth factors, technicians can prompt the cells to differentiate or turn into the required type of cell, like muscle or fat. Muscle cells will naturally move together in the suspension to form myotubes. These tubes can then be essentially mushed together to make beef burgers, if the origin is cow cells, or chicken nuggets if the origin is chicken cells, and so on. A single muscle stem cell could be grown into one trillion muscle cell tubes. That's a lot of burgers and nuggets from one tiny cell. And take a good guess at which cells scientists in white coats thought of. Tumor cells. Now everyone knows how quickly a tumor can rapidly grow out of control, which is why it scares people shitless. But that also makes these cells the perfect vehicle for lab-grown meat. Of course, they're not going to call them tumor cells because <laughs> that's too closely connected to cancer. And that wouldn't just be bad for business, but damaging to the industry as a whole. If someone told you that thick and juicy piece of meat you were eating was made possible because of tumor cells, you'd most likely throw up and then faint from anxiety or hysteria. Wait, wait, wait. See, this is where things get a bit sketchy. And although we're preconditioned to believe the worst, Let's lay down some facts, minus the propaganda. The cells used in the production of lab-grown meat are similar to tumor cells in the way that they mutate quickly and infinitely. They show dependence on growth factors and are sensitive to growth inhibitors as well. Unlike transformed cells that are cancerous, which provide the catalyst for some devastating tumors. Immortalized cells are defined as cell lines that do not stop dividing or cells that have been artificially manipulated to proliferate indefinitely and can thus be cultured over several generations. Immortal because they multiply forever. Now I know what you're thinking. It's based in science, so it's probably not a big deal. But it does make you stop and wonder if this is the best idea, seeing that the wheel is working fine right now. So why are we trying to reinvent it? But more on that coming up soon. Although stem cells or immortalized cells have been used for decades in healthcare, using them to create lab-grown meat can be a bit intimidating. This is a relatively new science that has not undergone adequate testing, data collection, and results, so no one really knows how these cells will affect people voluntarily introducing them to their bodies. But hey, who cares? Scientific breakthroughs are sexy, and we're saving animals and the planet. And after all, that's 
what really matters, right? And while your lab-grown meat matures in your bioreactors, you can prepare to add the last ingredient to the recipe. Question is though, how do you protect the developing cells? With no form of immune system against germs, viruses, bacteria, and other parasites. A generous dose of good old antibiotics. But what do you mean these cells are defenseless? To take cells from a cow or chicken and grow them quickly, they need to be put in a very expensive custom-made bioreactor filled with a specially formulated liquid made with purified water, growth factors, purified amino acids, glucose, and salts. A cow just needs rainwater and grass. The facility and the bioreactor need to be totally sterile because a tiny amount of bacteria or virus could ruin the whole batch, wasting tons of money. A cow has an immune system, so it can just lay in the dirty grass outside. Now guess where those antibiotics go after the meat is processed? With the hard part done and your lab meat ready for consumption, it's time to play a love ballad on the public's heartstrings. With simple but effective genius marketing schemes like No animal was designed just to make me. An animal was designed to be an animal, love living its life, have babies, heal broken bones, run around, and live as long as it could by feeding itself the food it can find. That sound you hear is pigs and chickens and cows rejoicing. And remember that bit about saving the planet? If you want to make a lot of lab meat efficiently, you need a big vessel. But it's really difficult and expensive to keep big vessels clean. And the bigger the vessel, the less efficient the cells grow. You can use perfusion to make your cells grow more efficiently, but perfusion is even more expensive, and it doesn't scale. It uses way too much of that expensive growth medium. And making tons of growth medium is currently too resource expensive and bad for the environment, which defeats the whole purpose of LabMate. And now your bank account is off to the races. But in actuality, your futuristic meat production lab is worse for the environment than its conventional counterpart. Okay, so you've struck down all of the arguments for lab-grown meat. But hey, at the end of the day, no animals were killed, right? We forgot to mention something very important. Mixed into your meat concoction is the one single element that we did not shed light on. Fetal bovine serum. FBS prevents the replicating stem cells from committing suicide. Normally, cells have a mechanism that tells them they're growing in the wrong place and shuts it down. This is normally a good thing and keeps different parts of the body developing properly. But when cells are growing in a metal tank and not a body, this warning system needs to be turned off. And for whatever reason, FBS works almost completely universally. When added to any type of cell, that cell will start to replicate and grow whether it's chicken, beef, fish, or muscle, skin, or liver cells. Other serums do exist, but none are so versatile. As of now, FBS is the essential ingredient to lab-grown meat, an ingredient that completely defeats the purpose of artificial meat. No animals harmed or killed. Hmm. Now, are we really being honest? Food companies have just been granted approval this year to sell their genius invention, lab-grown meat, to a restaurant in your neighborhood. Here you go, folks. And giant facilities yeah. are being built right now as you're watching this video. So whether or not you agree with it, lab-grown meat is here to stay. But you have a choice, right? For now, lab-grown meat is only being sold in high-end restaurants and not in local grocery stores because the cost of production is still very high. And it is still very difficult to produce in mass numbers, but scientists are optimistic that this could change within the next five years. But what do conventional farmers think about this? As I like to call it fake meat. We want to make sure that we have a level playing field on marketing and safety inspection. Red meat is one of the most nutrient-dense foods we can consume. But the best way to protect yourself is to be fully informed and make conscious decisions instead of following the crowd. Capitalism has a voracious appetite that needs to be fed. But by having some level of self-control, you can decide not to buy into this fake meat trap and at the very least, vary your diet. That should it come to the point that you cannot tell the difference between lab-grown and conventional meat, the amounts that you do happen to consume won't negatively impact you.